Hello, greetings. Uh, the, um, I have to be bothered about this. Unfortunately, coming ac across some imbecile ex-Muslims who have become atheists. Um, so, looking at them, I really do feel that God doesn't exist. <laughs> Their immature behavior. Uh, but uh, I was... So then, what is this that sustains itself? Who created this? Did our rational minds create this? We think. We think. So can it come in our thoughts? Uh, do we sustain this? Or is there some intelligence force higher, higher than thought which created this? So there must be something and intelligent. And if a scientist, as the atheists now point to us, saying that scientists have not found proof for God's existence. All-knowing God, I don't know. But there's some intelligent force that uh, exists, which has origin of everything. So. Uh, we, I have done cause and effect. The primal cause didn't make sense to me. Because if uh, we take the cause, primal cause uh, in my philosophy class in St. Joseph's College many years back, uh, didn't make sense to me. It was, uh, didn't quite give me the full answer to what I wanted. What I wanted or the mind. Uh, so I don't know how to... Uh, say this, but the atheists have their arguments at the tip of their fingers, tongue, at, uh, you know, at the tip of their tongues. And uh, so if they say that scientists, uh, scientists would be really immature, uh, premature to say that God does not exist. A true scientist is still, still searching because, you know, we haven't found uh, all the answers. Uh, scientists haven't found all the answers uh, to end sufferance even in this world. They are trying, no doubt about it. Some scientists like Richard Dawkins and Sam Harris. No, Richard Dawkins uh, is a scientist, yeah. Uh, Sam Harris is an atheist, I think. I, I don't know much about Sam Harris, but uh, I've heard his... Uh, name and uh, this uh, one brilliant video um, jo by Jordan Peterson, The Problem with Atheism. Because I was searching that atheism doesn't make sense. So this is not religion, this is philosoph philosophy. Sorry, I, can, I always, uh, I've, I, I had read one book of, of uh, Dostoevsky. So my friend told me this is how and then I just pronounced it my own way. Um, my friend had this book, and it was uh, she referred it to me uh, to read it. Uh, Dostovsky's. So, anyways, I'm stuck with this uh, way of pronouncing pronouncing his name. Sorry. Uh, so, but it's a mispronunciation, and uh, so. I think scientists, it would be premature for scientists to say that they are atheists. It doesn't make sense to me. Because a true scientist would say, I'm still searching for evidence. We're still, we don't have full knowledge of everything. And how can the mind have full knowledge of everything? This means that it's limited. So you say that the mind is limited and we don't have full knowledge of the universe. Of, uh, we haven't. Okay, we've gone to the moon and some planets, uh, outer space, but uh, we haven't gone to all the planets, have we, in a rocket? And uh, so all these galaxies and all the things, uh, wouldn't it be pre premature for of a scientist to say that he's an atheist? And a true scientist would still... Uh, be reserved about this. God, uh, whether God exists or not, we 
we cannot say we are still searching so uh, these atheists come up with such conclusions uh, that the scientists say this uh, because of that God delusion and you know it's anything thing uh, Richard Dawkins has written this book and they've read uh, some of uh, I guess uh, some books now Bertrand Russell and all this uh, Bertrand Russell I read long time ago so but recently when I read his thing on God uh, existence of God um, before when I read it I felt that uh, he was quite like um, atheists are quite strong people I felt but now with all this uh, you know so commercialized uh, on YouTube uh, entertainment ex-Muslims uh, apostate prophet talking to this one that one all the time uh, they are coming up with and uh, saying that uh, you know, if if uh, I would believe in a God, if uh, there was, so the problem of evil also, like, uh, th but they wouldn't take time to think uh, like this, right? If there's suffering, so much suffering, so much suffering. So uh, setting aside all, uh, okay, suffering is there, yes. Like sometimes I also feel that. Where is God in all this, right? Because even those these atheists, they've taken the upper hand on YouTube with the arguments and all. Where's God? Right? Uh, there's no God. Who cares? So, you know, um, but uh, that's so, like, because... I'm thinking of, uh, you know, a winner takes it all, loser standing small. And uh, now in this condition, very insecure emotionally and all this. So I think that, like, where is God, you know? Because, you know, there are uh, prejudices and preferences uh, in these ex-Muslims too. And un unfairness. And all this. Where is God? So, I don't know. But, uh, if there was a God, so he would listen to someone's cries. So, right? Probably he's listening. Because uh, I was told, you want to see that there's a God, but a God is not that small that you will warn people, right? My God, my God is, it doesn't on this. He has a lot of patience with such people. So, you know, giver of life, taker of life. I mean, who knows what tomorrow brings. So be careful. If you hurt someone, it might come back to you. This Einstein's uh, every action has a reaction. So, the thing is that, uh, like uh, some guru was telling me, shall I show you? Because you know that same, when uh, apostate prophet was not feeling well, I was like, I'm going to, this is the first time I asked for his help, for months. But like, my God is not so small that you would know, because uh, I saw that, you know, he is, okay, whatever I saw, it doesn't really, it really doesn't matter because I went uh, playing ping pong and telling myself it really, 
really this thing just get it out they don't matter to you why is the mind but this uh, the lady was right in London now so you don't want to think like I wouldn't waste my thing what what matters you know as a Shia I've been I've known in my there were Sunnis who hated us who uh, in in who misunderstood who who, uh, who spread false rumors against Shias but because of Imam Hussain's sacrifice that thing that I felt that no one in the world there's no example like Taksir the nahi koi sayyati that it is that's a Punjabi no how we have uh, there's no example of Imam Hussain to save humanity you give your children you give everything you give yourself and you say Ab maybe not even me so see people are not going to go after something so like giving their lives like Charles Dickens has said right about Imam Hussain many of these later on I read but uh, Jiddu Krishnamurti was like don't look at the sublime or anything find out for yourself because I felt the mind and even my religious values were crumbling down in crisis like I would question everything so Charles Dickens on Imam Hussain uh, you see the madness of uh, so, like uh, giving a uh, sacrificing one's child if when based on leadership when God's leadership like we have in the Quran so that verse comes to me. that Abraham my covenant does not reach the Zalimun the cruel it doesn't say disbelievers it says Zalimun right uh, just a minute, I'll just check. Hello, yes, uh, the Roman English, Zalimin, not uh, Zalimon, but yes, evildoers, unjust people. Zalimin for us is uh, evildoers, so, you know, uh, even a, a small speck of unkindness or unfairness prejudice you know so yeah it says Zalim mean my covenant yeah this is Surah Baqarah Ayat remember when Abraham was tested by his Lord with certain commandments which he fulfilled Allah said I will certainly make you into a role model for the people Abraham asked what about my offspring Allah replied, my covenant is not extended to the wrongdoers. I will certainly make you an imam. It does say imam or does it say khalifa. Oh, here it is. Oops, what did I do? Uh, uh, Ibrahim, Rabbuka, Bekalama, then Fatama. Imaman. Oh, yes, Allah Malashid Rabbi was right. So, uh, yeah, Imam. Uh, so that's why Allah Malashid Rabbi was right. So, waiting for the true Imam to appear to justice, bring justice in this world. <coughs> oh my God! Uh, Allah Marashid Rabi was right. Uh, so Allah Marashid Rabi said, "If you want to know Imamat from the Quran, you should uh, read the verses on Ibrahim and find out about, like, learn, study Ibrahim, Hazrat Ibrahim in the Quran from the Quran verses." Imamat. So, uh, the thing was that, so I started to contemplate like uh, 
then like uh, if the mind okay forget the all-knowing God and suffering in this world we don't know much about why there is today so much so um, you know problem of evil and suffering in this world problem of evil like uh, through my religion even you can see philosophy uh, evil and suffering or yeah, the problem of evil and Indian thought his argument all this so I was looking at my a religious one and uh, at that time I was when I was doing research although I didn't have strength but uh, struggling well I did it I read articles and books on the internet uh, Shia and all this Shia websites uh, from there bought some books also when I was in Karachi uh, so the thing is that uh, uh, you see no one would uh, take the time although they see the atheists that uh, you know if proof is uh, there we will take the proof but uh, they don't want to look at the proof so these kind of people I just uh, leave them aside because uh, the there's a need. If I have this feeling that there should be no sufferance in this world, and why my mind cannot take it unless God's grace came in or you know settled me, and I thought, okay, uh, this is a miracle. This is like now my sufferance is gone, and that microscopic, like I was. It's become so microscopic, and uh, so you know uh, the answer was that, uh, like uh, you have to be, I guess you have to suffer first, and then uh, some of us, and then the answer came, and it was this great emptiness and all this that. I was like, I, I can't uh, describe this uh, thing. Before before going for the principle and all that, like, uh, this was so, this was like uh, so great. Uh, but uh, that's uh, God's grace came to me, I felt. And then I lost it. Uh, So I lost it somewhere. Uh, so my, uh, sorry, I have a headache. Sight, it comes and goes like this. I feel, I'm feeling a little bit sick. Uh, so, uh, what I was thinking, I'm, I'd, I'd like to share uh, for my uh, for, for my record to preserve preserve this video. Um, that uh, something that is some intelligence which has to be beyond the mind or is it uh, the first mind oh mind and uh, so reading Jiddu Krishnamurti helped me is that because if there is if there was no thought then there would be no time and so there would just be and Imam what I got from Imam Jafar Sadiq the definition of time is a uh, distance between two known events but reading jit that's what, uh, one thing Imam Jafar Sadiq said so uh, that's all he said about time he defined time like no one has defined a uh, distance between sorry distance between two known events so then I read Jiddu Krishnamurti and uh, it's like thought is time to be and to become and all this and uh, so this is not about like you won't find instantaneous why gods of or all-knowing God in this but you uh, these atheists uh, those who don't want to take time they are not 
interested should not come here. I have nothing to do with them. Uh, and so my thing is uh, that my thing, you see, is that, uh, is it my thing or is it like that? Uh, so, no, but uh, all this, like my mind can barely go so far. Uh, my, uh, how far can the mind go? So I'll need to be a scientist, like I had to buy Mich Michio Kaku's book, you know, to find out. So in, uh, in Karachi, we have this bookshop near my house. I used to go to Michio Kaku's. But thank God I found uh, like a Jiddu Krishnamurti. But I wanted to read uh, Michio Kaku's book. Because to study the, like, what is this mind? Michio Kaku, the God equation, what is this? Right? And then I just left it aside. I think I left his book aside, one of the books. I wanted to buy or I bought, I'm not sure, in Karachi. And then I was doing Chitu Krishnamurti. Whatever in this madness, uh, voices and all vibrations uh, so the thing is that is there something that is timeless uh, it uh, aroused my curiosity and I've always been a searcher after the crisis uh, with in my life some uh, crisis I, so searching search. Uh, so, the whole, if you just look at the universe, like how the, so much space, you know, on TV, I was just looking at this, uh, they were showing greenery, scenic, right, and so much, like, no people there, like, but, uh, you know, like, so much vastness, and uh, it's just unused space. What is the reason for all this? Right? Because a man has not uh, discovered. I mean, how many people are going to walk there on that vast, scenic like, place? Uh, so, I just felt like, oh my God, God has made so much. So when I was thinking of God, 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 like, oh my God, God has made so much. We haven't even, have we gone around the world and seen like so much space, so much space? And uh, the, so who's going to use all this? And I got out these, uh, you know, wildflowers, and grass grows, and things happen on their own without a gardener sometimes. And, I was so like awestruck, but then I was questioning, how can God, like, what is all this space for? What, what, what is? And then here in our own life, we are suffering, suffering. So, and sometimes the grace of God really helps because. Uh, you feel uh, something ca came which made me feel like uh, what the, I was like you know so much sin guilty feeling that um, about my personal life that I've done to this teacher I can't let go and then when I go there it backfires trespassing and all this and uh, so much guilt so much guilt I couldn't forgive myself the therapist kept telling me, you have to forgive yourself. You need to forgive yourself. The other, okay, she's not forgiving you, she's not forgiving you. I felt the teacher didn't care and I should kill myself. You know, like that at times. I should destroy myself. Okay, she doesn't care for me, that said, I'm going, I'm leaving life. At the drop up the head, any day, I could just take something and want to kill myself. So very frequently that was taking place. 
right? And I felt there was no God. Uh, like I felt like, where are you? Oh no, there's no God. Uh, so, but it, that, those were just phases when I was suffering. But then there came this feeling that, oh my God, uh, I was inside. I was crying, and before that, but now when that feeling, that thing of uh, came uh, that I can take life, whatever comes, and just don't hurt others. But if you want to even form a relationship with whoever you start to love and the feeling comes for someone but from the emptiness it came you know just don't uh, the best consolation is that you give the other person the freedom uh, give it. and if they betray you and if they turn cold on you so I tried to explain it to myself in this madness it wasn't because the it was repeating in my mind, and even now I'm feeling like you know if I want to let go of the principle, I I feel this terrible uh, pain inside, uh, literally like stiff and very bad pain, physic it's psychosis, but it's like no sorry it's a psychosomatic. I was the other word for it. But it, it's really, it really hurts a lot. So, but uh, like I try, before that, like I had told, I said, oh my God, that's given me such a miracle. I would have died, killed myself eventually. <coughs> so then, again I, but that emptiness that came, uh, that courage to face the darkness and the separation, forever and ever, like, I was like, I didn't struggle to bring this up, this feeling, and to maintain it, it just came from out of nowhere. I didn't work for it. Or maybe over the years doing therapy and going to a, then it wasn't working, then going to a yoga master, um, Professor Moyes, and or reading self help books and doing what he look at the candle, tip of the candle, and this a little bit of his exercises he gave me. <coughs> Gardening, I couldn't do. <coughs> Like I would look at the plant and say, oh, why is it fallen? <gasps> this plant has fallen, right? This leaf has fallen and it's become separated. And I, I would go in my room and feel so much like the plant, the leaf. Now it was like 1989 and Mr. Sa was not coming to me. But this was the end of me in the new house. I would look at the plant leaf falls and oh no it's separated and god you did this i had become so sensitive and uh, then on the other hand my anger also would erupt very badly so on one hand very very like sensitive and uh, very but on the other hand if someone lied or i would erupt in such like explode in anger. So, two extremes. Um, but then what happened is something happened. Um, I thought it was perhaps I was going to Professor Moez or something, uh, but uh, like there was a time and I couldn't forgive myself at all. I wouldn't. And the guilt was taking me back to Miss Dissa, my teacher. And it was backfiring. But once her sister told me she had come from Canada. She passed she's passed away. She told me that you you are a Muslim, you can do this. Pause. 
that was it. I went home and I said, oh God, how can you? Now my religion, because, you know, as I was saying, as a Shia, oh, it's come on my religion. So then Bibi Maryam sent a girl in my dream, like I see, she, uh, because she told me, she gave me this bread that you get, but a very big one, bigger. You get this small round horse bread in church. I got a big one on my hand. It was like she said, you are Zahra. Bibi Maryam, you, you are Zahra. I said, yes. She said, Bibi Maryam has sent this for you. And I ate that bread and then I see myself like some place, uh, church seats outside. Uh, they're not inside a church, but it's outdoors. But the church seats or something else. So some dark place, then that's Saint. But then I looked at it. I when I went to Saint Joseph's College, when I went to Saint uh, Joseph's uh, School, I looked at that backyard where. Ah, it could be that area where Sister Mary had called uh, Emily. Sister Emily had called. Sorry, Sister Mary. Uh, Sister Emily had called me. And she's short, uh, but this this was a girl, okay, and a dark one, who came and told me. So, anyways, I felt God had forgiven me. Otherwise, I would have killed myself. Uh, I mean, uh, just in uh, September, uh, no, August, yeah, August, no, no, September, nineteen first uh, in beginning of September. I would have died in uh, 1998 would have been the end of me. No, no, sorry, 1989. 1989 September would have been a finished level, leveler, death the leveler, that poem. And yeah, so uh, from all that, I came out of uh, the, so much pain, so much guilt. Uh, I couldn't forgive myself, so I'm just telling you that I felt such grace of God. Uh, uh, and for my religion also, I beseeched God. If that night when I came home, when uh, Miss Disa's sister told me, you are Muslim, you can do this. If someone, had, like they say in Urdu, if someone cut it, then it won't come out. I was so gone. I could have taken pills and killed myself. So, September, and then I joined, yeah, September 27, then when I joined, uh, uh, I joined St. Joseph's College, something happened there to me, so, uh, just this emptiness and all, and uh, the courage, it was like, not, I didn't muster up courage, like I'm mustering up courage right now to speak here. But uh, it was like uh, something just vanished. All that pain, that guilt, all that. But it remained at times when I used to carry Miss uh, Shafiqa Fikri's bag like I'm a convict. I used to feel a little uh, below them, like, you know, no, I should not. Then below them in the sense they are seniors, but then like as a student, like not there for them, right? So that thing would come up, but like, yeah, because it's a con conservative and that's a convent teacher, right? So, uh, and then I felt it. Okay, I can't say what I felt, but uh, so now here I wanted to. So it took me, no, that was like later. It, so to love the principal, form a new relationship, it took a year. I said, I have to see myself because the guilt, if I don't send a, if I don't go there, anymore. So it took a year for me. It was like a punishment saying, you're not to love her. That's why, oh, that's also why 
I just sent her a card without my name, anonymous. I kept it on her desk, principal's desk. So all this, anyways, this, so why does my, anyhow, now about, uh, so this emptiness, so I, I can't, uh, uh, there is some force div divine, like Shakti Gwen puts it, divinity, divine divinity or divine power. Shakti Gwen has written a book and she, in that book she said that she was not a religious, she's not a religious person. Like the, but uh, so much spirituality, I don't know where it came from, Shakti Gwen. So, but she believes in that energy is, uh, it's all energy, all this. And she knew more than what I, like, I'm a Shia, and I don't know <laughs> that this is all energy. You know, all this material, it looks material, but it's all energy. You can say, oh, this ashtray is energy? Are you kidding? So, uh, you know, these atheists, they make fun like that. Anyhow, so, uh, Shakti Gwen has uh, explained how this is all energy in her book, Creative Visualization, that I had in 1987-88. Anyhow, uh, so, yeah, energy uh, and, oh my God, I was like, this is all energy. How does Shakti Gwen know this is all energy? And she's not even religious, but she is very spiritual. So, and then these atheists, they don't make sense. These new ones, actually, I really used to respect because I think uh, Bertrand Russell had some integrity. Uh, these atheists. These uh, newcomers, they just are kind of immature, imbecile. So, uh, so I'll continue. I don't think this is going. It when I'm angry, it might from my Facebook page. So you know all this moral, secular moral it came from philosophy. You know, many years of history so man's brains and from monkey we became you know, like Darwin's uh, theory Darwin's uh, findings or Darwin's theory when I was in Karachi American school they used to say Darwin's theory theory it's not uh, the I don't know it's Darwin's theory or have they found evidence for the now Darwin thing on uh, those species you know changing from monkey to what do you call that evolution Darwin's evolution theory anyhow uh, so then uh, like uh, what is like there's something beyond thought right nature is more powerful can blow us away in a storm or earthquake or something so what is all this who what power is there what is there a supreme power also and is there a designer or an intelligent forget the designing thing it's failed with a lot of scientists uh, atheists but is there this power beyond us and is there and forget the all-knowing because uh, we can never find out because there's no, uh, we can't find out about the all-knowing God. How can we be all-knowing? We can't be all-knowing. Uh, so then how do you know? I don't know. We can't, so that's why I just leave aside all-knowing God. And so there's some intelligence that is keeping all this going the sun, the moon, night, day, and all this, you know. What is this intelligence? Like Newt, 
N Newton found out that a uh, apple fell by what is the gravitational law. So at that time, like people could be laughing at Newton that the uh, apple has fallen on his head and he's, uh, you know, even the atheists would have uh, laughed at him. He's contemplating. And what he found was gravitational force and law. So, apple has fallen on Newton's head. I mean, I don't want to joke about this, but uh, yeah. uh, and uh, it doesn't make sense to me that atheism, the same, and then they say they want, if they could find evidence or something. I think their minds are still, it's a premature and immature imbeciles. That's what I think. And because I felt something, and uh, like even in Karachi American school, people, they used to argue, bring God into arguments and reasoning and all that. God can, I was like, how can they do this? It is, God is beyond, it's not like it's, God is coming on hand, hello? Hello? Can you see God here? Uh, so, maybe he can come in our hand. So, what a stupid thing that uh, there's no power. Like, everything was just created like this, and the probability and plausibility. And God knows what goes on. I mean, my cousin and I was telling me about this when he used to talk about this uh, from Oman. That, you know, scientists say that all this was by chance. And so the probability of uh, a universe happening because of some intelligence behind it or some intelligent power behind it is very low. All this just happened by chance. So we've heard this probability thing, argument and all this. If you've ever even read philosophy and all, and if you have the eloquence to express yourself, then you will make it in the main alley, uh, the same YouTube. So, what's the, uh, so it's come by, ch it's uh, happened by chance, they say, scientists say. The universe has, uh, because the probability, the dice, how many times? God knows what, and my cousin was trying to explain all that to me, but now I've forgotten. It's been a long time. Uh, so, because it's, it, it, it's, uh, and even like, uh, it's just, uh, you know, by chance, this all, not by design, but by chance. The universe, came about by chance. Universe. So I've got to do some, by chance, a universe uh, cre created itself, or it, it just came about by chance. And these stupid people cannot see. How, I mean, this is ridiculous that this universe came about by chance. And if chance is such a thing, then chance is divine, I should say. Isn't it? Because what? Because, uh, you see, then chance is very divine. So, for me to get the atheist nonsense. It doesn't, like, what is this? So then chance is divine. And design is not divine. Some intelligence, or it came about by chance. So chance, we should always be using chance. Gambling. Because chance is divine. But you have to use chance 
one day you will fail, one day you will succeed. But scientists have to use their mind. And hard work. And so, do scientists, did scientists say that everything came about by chance? There's this, this group of scientists who said everything created was created or came about or whatever it was by chance. So then if it came about by chance, now my logic was everything really created by chance? Like scientists say it was created by chance, some people. <laughs> <It's just laughs> Did the universe come into existence by chance? Chance events that led to human existence. <laughs> Rod, but no, 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 Don Stewart, are we here by chance or design? <laughs> These stupid people can see that uh, it's so imbecile. Any child can see that uh, signs are leading to some intelligence in the universe and if chance was divine then like I just don't have the proper words to put this <laughs> chance so then chance must be the God the greatest God right Thank you so much. I'll continue later.